Thank you. Um, like many Americans, earlier this year I was laid off from my real paying job, not this gig here. Um, after 14 years of service, um, various positions held over the years, increasing responsibility, whatever euphemism the consultants come up with, I end up here looking for work. Now, we have with us tonight someone who is an HR executive, a career coach, an author, a speaker, and a master networker. That's Matt Levy. Matt, welcome to the show. Now, Matt, um, many years ago, uh, when I had finished my doctorate, I was coming out of graduate school, finding a job was all about looking through the newspapers or the trade journals in, in your area, writing a really crisp cover letter, printing your resume on some fancy paper, mailing it away, and just hoping like hell someone would call back. How have things changed? Things have changed, Patrick. That uh, technique is called posting and praying, and it just does not work in the current climate. Instead, Patrick, you really have to get out there and network, network, and network. So networking's the key. Tell us about networking, Matt. Well, Patrick, the idea is to build rapport and credibility with individuals uh, in your sphere of influence. So you're saying I'm pretty much screwed. Uh, yeah, <laughs> that's right. Based on what I've seen so far, yes. <laughs> hey, I'm the comedian here. But there's hope. <laughs> okay. How can networking help someone like me who's actually looking for a job? A well, paying job, not this gig. Well, Patrick, <laughs> Truthfully, there's what's called a hidden job market. Only a few percentage, percentage points of jobs are actually posted on job boards like Monster and CareerBuilder. Instead, the vast majority are filled through networking. Individuals reach out to others and say, who do you know? And your job is to tap into that and be the person they turn to. Okay, so how does someone like me or anyone who's looking for a job tap into this hidden network? Well, you got to start by uh, building a contact list. Those are individuals in your network that you already know. And you need to speak with them and explain that you are seeking new directions. And from there, with a target list of companies, you can get to two and three degrees of separation and find yourself networking and talking with people in hiring capacity. So who am I looking to network with? Well, there's a saying that goes, where you think you're going to get the most help, you'll get the least. And where you expect to get the least amount of help, you'll find the most. So first and foremost, you need to really have an inclusive list of, uh, of friends, family, acquaintances, uh, suppliers, vendors, uh, folks that you've worked with, obviously. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, networking can, be, can take all forms, that's for sure. Now, how do I network? Do I just call them on the phone? Do I stop by their office? What do I do? Well, I'll tell you, Patrick, it really gets down to building rapport and credibility. Okay. You don't want to just go up to somebody and say, hey, I'm unemployed, I need a job. Okay, right? that's good to know. <laughs> <laughs> right? Uh, They're going to run in the opposite direction. Yeah, I've and, seen that a lot. Right? <laughs> Uh, people uh, want to build relationships, they want to build rapport, they want to build trust, and that's what you need to do as a networker with an eye towards networking to find your next job. I see. Now, years ago, and I'm talking back in the dark ages when I entered the industry, I had a Rolodex on my desk, and I had business cards of people that I had sh I'd shaken hands with them, so I knew them. Are people still using the Rolodex? Is, are there other tools available? Well, I hate to tell you, but most of the folks nowadays don't even know what a Rolodex is. What? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, instead, much of what occurs happens online nowadays. In fact, okay. LinkedIn is really a virtual Rolodex that, that, that people in the know are taking advantage of in a big way. Ooh, virtual Rolodex, that's interesting. Tell me more about this LinkedIn thing. Right, well, LinkedIn is the professional site uh, for networking. It does have a social media component to it, but it's growing by leaps and bounds, Patrick. There's one new user every second. Up to about 110 million people are on LinkedIn. Wow. Now, is this Facebook, or is this Facebook for adults? Well, it, uh, it serves its own niche. It's professional-related networking, and that's okay. why it's really key for job search. Okay, I see that. And um, so... Electronically, you become connected to these people? And is there a magic number one needs? 
Well, there is a, there is a critical mass. Uh, okay. The pundits would suggest that you need at least 143 connections to really start your network, to, to make your network work for you. Uh, I wouldn't stop there, though. But you need to reach out to first folks that you've worked with, uh, folks that you've interacted with, and then from there you can reach out to folks that you haven't even gotten in touch with. You just need to make sure that you approach them in the right way. And that's electronically or face-to-face -face or what? Well, it could be through LinkedIn, it could be through email, it could be through phone calls and face-to-face. -face. Ultimately, it's important though when you're networking from a job search perspective not to be a computer jockey. You need to uh, utilize the, the, the technology, but really people do business with people, not with computers, so you do need to get out there and network face-to-face -face as well. So you need to get out there and you know, a couple of guys well-dressed like us probably have no problem sitting in, you know, big rooms and pressing the flesh, so to say. Are there more non-traditional ways for someone who's not comfortable wearing a business suit? Well, there certainly is. Uh, it's definitely important that you first seek out professional organizations in your area of expertise, network with those folks, but you can also network where your passions lie. There's individuals that, that uh, are getting involved with all different aspects of, uh, of hobbies, actually. One thing I'm into is cars, so you could even network uh, like at a car show or something like that. Okay, a car show, and we actually, we got some tape from one of your networking events. Benny, can we roll that tape, the car tape? Patrick Kessler here at the C3 event, Cars, Careers, Coffee, and is that all three? Maybe not in the right order, but we'll, we'll fix that in post. Anyway, I got uh, Russ, Charlene, and Knut. I'm an all-American boy, <laughs> and I drive an all-American sports car. The beauty about driving fast, as everybody can attest, I'm sure, is it gets you places. There's nothing worse than driving at 55 miles an hour. It's got the M shifter, it's got the, uh, the sport bucket seats the lowered suspension. I mean, it's got really everything, and particularly the, uh, the stick shift. The one thing that BMW sucks about is putting in cup holders. Cup holders are not part of the German mentality. Beer might fit into the newer versions. Bunch of motorheads in the family. Absolutely, yeah. I, you know, when I was not old enough to drive yet, I was working on engines with my brother. What's that really long thing down, down there in the middle? Is that the Johnson rod? That is the Johnson rod. I'm surprised that you knew that. An awesome car. That is a Ford GT. Only 4,000 or so made. How are you doing with the babes with this thing? You know, my wife hasn't even driven in it yet. Have you ever had the, uh, the occasion where women will just gratuitously flash themselves at you while you drive by? Every day. Every, Every day. day. Uh, we need to get one of these for the show. <laughs> I went nose dive into the puddle and I got stuck. What weighs more, you or one of these tires? Uh, oh, I think one of the tires. <laughs> oh my gosh, let's see if I can do that. Elbow, elbow, wrist, wrist. Elbow, elbow, wrist, wrist. This thing is awesome. Let's try not to kill anybody. The hell was that? I think that was a Corolla. Traditionally, a sports car, um, it's either the mistress or the sports car for the midlife crisis. And you chose both? So Matt, two things uh, from the video. One, so, sorry about the Porsche. Uh, that, that was actually Matt's Porsche. Them sort of brakes. <laughs> but it did give me experience of being a U-boat commander. So, and the other thing is, I noticed the young lady with the Royal Wave, and I believe that's the name of your e-book, right? Tell us about your e-book. Oh, thanks, Patrick. Yeah, I do have a 70-page e-book out. You can download it off of my website. It's intended to give practical tips and inspiration for individuals that are either out of work or those that are trying to actively manage their career. Okay, now I also understand you're a career coach. If someone wants to hire you, how do they contact you? Do you have a website? Yes, uh, Patrick, you can uh, go to cornerofficecoach.com okay. or you can hit me up on LinkedIn, Matthew Levy, or you can hit me up on Twitter, that's mlevy7 is my handle. And you give a discount for internet TV hosts, <laughs> I understand? Uh, for you, we'll work something out. Excellent, <laughs> excellent. Matt, thanks for joining Enjoyed us. Enjoyed it, Patrick. Thanks for having me. <laughs>